So, after the success of Sunday Driver, <laughs> I say success, it was, it was a lucrative day. And I thought to myself, well, look, I know the rules. I've said, I've always said you can't work weekends. There's no point working at weekends. You won't get anything coming back. Weekends, you know, you'll go all the way out there. You won't get anything coming back. I think basically it's like, like the idea of having weekends off for once in my life, you know. Um, but now what I've kind of discovered is that if you do one day every two weeks, and if you do it on a Sunday, which means I won't, obviously if I do it on a Saturday when I finished, I'm kind of stuck there and I'm going to be, I'm going to be out there for go have at least one day off so I'm going to have all day Sunday off two hotels don't work out but if you do it on a Sunday you drive up on a Sunday and you can then get, get a hotel come back on a Monday and get to see a bit of the world so lovely fantastic so I thought well I won't go caught in it but if the job picks up I'm going to have a go so I'm looking I'm looking for like jobs as you do and then one picks up Collecting in Tring on Friday afternoon, which seems to be lovely because Tring is literally t uh, 10 minutes away from the yard, and it also means I might get finished early on a Friday, so um, I'll get my afternoon back. Uh, yeah, get Friday afternoon because I'm losing Sunday, you see, because obviously you've got things to do over the weekend videos, editing, gardening, wash the cars, that kind of stuff like that. So, um, Tring going to Liverpool 12 o'clock on Sunday, and I'm thinking to myself, well, look. I'm going to quote it, and if the money's right, why, why not indeed? Why not, like, you know? So, um, right, I've done the quote, and you know when you're doing well because it sits there for a little while, so they obviously don't really want to go with you, they want something a little bit more reasonable, someone's going out of the way, and then eventually they've got to own up to the fact that for three hours they've had one bit from one person, it's either that or nothing. So maybe they've gone to their customer and gone, this is the price, what do you want to do? He rang me up, he says, about that job you quoted on Sunday. I went, yeah. He said, you still available? I've gone, unfortunately, yes. He kind of laughed at that. He went, well, it's fortunate for me, isn't it? So I sent it across Sunday. He went, okay, I'm off to Liverpool. Da 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 Contemporary reference for the 18 to 25 year olds there. Um, and I like Liverpool. The Liverpool was the play, I say like Liverpool. I've never really properly been. It was a place that I've been, I thought, I've done Manchester, I've done Brighton, I've done Bournemouth, I've been to Edinburgh, I've been to Glasgow, I've been to Wales, I've been to Cardiff, I've been to Aberystwyth when I was a kid. The last place I thought I've never seen that I want to see in my own country, I've done, done Leeds, done Sheffield, done all that, never done Liverpool. So I have been to Liverpool, although in fairness, I did kind of stay at the uh, look at the docks and look at but I saw the live building, it was over there in between the land and the sky. And um, I thought, well, look, here we go. I can go to Liverpool, I can drop it at 12, get a hotel, maybe if I can get one that ain't a million miles away from the centre, because they all tend to be on motorways, don't they? If I can get one that ain't a million miles away from the centre, I'll go and have a little look round. Maybe get up in the Liver building, maybe take a bus tour, maybe go see the cavern. I mean, I don't know, I've never done these things. So, brilliant, there we go. Then another job gets up. This is all the makings of my lucky day here. Yeah. So this other job picks up. Preston, picking up at one, and I'm thinking, well, Liverpool's 12, I could probably get it off a bit earlier, you know, if I'm a little bit, if I'm half hour late, it's really fun. Um, needs to go to Guildford on Monday morning. Oh, I'm thinking, this is, this is great. I'll drive up to Liverpool, because they're gonna struggle like the other mob to find someone who wants to work at like, you know, pick up lunchtime, on Sunday, that kind of thing. So, um, I've rung them up. <laughs> I've rung the geezer. I've got a man that job. He said, yeah. He said, is this Pete? <laughs> After you do that thing, you go, yeah, it's, yeah. So you watch the YouTube. He said, mate, he said, you're the reason I started this company. And now, at which point, I suppose I could have thought, well, here's a chance to pay the favour here. But I didn't. Because business is business, and we've all got to make a living. And I kind of went, oh, I said, are you happy? Is it working for you? He said, yes, my business partner, we're getting there. I said, I've got to go out, I've got my own customers. He said, you're right, you've definitely got to have your own customers. He said, we're getting there, we're turning over a bit of dough now. And I was like, I was really pleased for him. That's the best That's the best part of all this channel. When people ring you up, you speak to someone, they go, yeah, I'm doing it. I've watched you, and I'm doing it, and I'm happy. That's all, that's all I ever wanted to have it. That's just the best bit. 
Anyhow, so, so he's not really got a job, it's his business partner. His business partner rings him. He says, right, this job's coming in. He said, the thing is they've changed the collection time. It's now six o'clock. I'm like, oh. Okay, I see. He said, can you still do it? And I went, well, not really, because I'm going to be there at 12 and tips. And then what am I going to be doing for six hours? And I thought about it. And I went, you know what? I can still get it on board. I can, I can probably, I can stop Liverpool. I can have a little look around Liverpool, uh, part of the Loria. Then go and do the second collection. Then go over. We'll get as far over as I can. Get over to help drop it off in the morning. He said, fine, lovely. I've said it through. And it's good money again, because it's obviously a Sunday, Sunday collection. And it's going 250 miles or 200 miles. So, sure. So let's dive on it. And then I think, hang on a second, the trouble here. Because if I get up at 8, I've got driving time. I've got 10 hours. Oh, not, not the extended clock, I've got 10 hours. From from my house to Liverpool, four. Liverpool back to my house, four. I've got two hours in case something goes wrong, and it's a something. So the odds of something falling over in front of me and there being a big queue of traffic are minimal in relation to the normal daytime, you know? So I thought, hang on, I'm going on leave at eight, get there for 12. Then I've got to wait till six. So we, so we get that on by seven. I have got to stop driving by 11 o'clock. Not because of the driving time, but because of work time directive, which says that you can work 13 hours and two, I think, might be three times a week, you can work 15 hours. So if I start driving at eight, I have got to stop driving by 11. And then I'm thinking, okay. Now once I've done the 11, I've got to have a minimum nine hours rest. Although that can be the as extended rest, because um, if I have three hours off in the middle of the day, I told you this stuff is complicated. If you have three hours off in the middle of the day, then it doesn't count as a reduced rest, it counts as an extended rest. Thank you, Tom, without bringing up an arsenal. Uh, but say I've, got, say I've got at least nine hours. So if I get back, say, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, then I can't start driving till eight o'clock in the morning. But it's got to be off at eight o'clock in the morning in Guildford. And short of having a time machine, I can't do it. So I've rung him up. I've gone, OK, here's the thing. It's because they've changed the time on me, it's all gone sideways. I said, how, how hot are they about having it at 8 o'clock in the morning? He said, no, they're hot at 8 o'clock in the morning. But what we might be able to do is we might be able to adjust the collection time. I'll ring him. So he's running, he's running off, he's coming, he's running me back. He said, right, you can now collect at 4, which is better for me. There's no race, there's no, there's no hassle now. I'll get up to Liverpool, get that one done by 12. This is an exhibition centre, so they'll probably have to wait until all the public disappear off. I'll get the exhibition centre, go in, make myself known, Hang around, smile nicely. Oh, do you need any help packing away? Have such a lovely sunny day out there, lads. Sure, you want to get to the barbecue? Let's pull this early. Get it on as quickly as I can, and then head for home. So the plan is: get up to Liverpool, get it tipped, get to Preston, get it collected, and then get home. But it's going to be tight. I might not get home. I might have to instead head for Guildford get as close to Guildford as I possibly can, because if I go direct to Guildford, obviously I might be going out in the middle, man. Might be a hotel. It might be frustrating in the fact that I find myself living in, like, I find a hotel in Oxford for the night, which is three quarter an hour away from my house, because the way the driving time and all this kind of stuff works out, but I'll still be in Guildford at eight o'clock on, on Monday morning. On big money. My money, my money, my money. So, we're off to collect Tring right now, and then the race is on. Well, nearly at the collection point now. It's seven minutes away, and it's great because it's my turf, you know, it's my manor this. So, and it literally is 15 minutes away from the yard. So we're just going to go down here. I think I've even been here before. But then you, you, it's that thing, you don't even realise until you get these places. You go, oh yeah, yeah, I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got an idea if you think, oh, this was easy, and you didn't realise it wasn't. Uh, but no, there shouldn't be a problem. We're looking at, well, my pickup was between 12 and 4. What about us do? Pretty much ideal, almost ideally in the middle, so hopefully it'll all be ready for us when we get there and um, just get
get it on and then head for home. Turns out they're expecting me. That lorry was leaving, so we're going to take his place. And um, right, let's get it on. That's it all on board now. A beautiful sunny day, it's lovely today. Um, yeah, I've done some exotic loads in my time. I've done the um, the Christmas decorations for Lewis's, I've done film sets. I've got on 12 pallets of mold spray, eight and a half ton. It's not the most glamorous load I've ever transported, but money's money. <laughs> Time to take it back to the yard. We've got eight ton on board, eight and a half ton on board here, which is fine because of Veronica, being the big strong girl that she is, can carry ten. Um, I've had a weight, and if she weighed in, it's an eighteen ton truck, and she weighed in pretty much bang on eight ton empty. But that's with full tank of fuel, the add blue, the pump truck, all that kind of stuff. And eight ton is what they put on. We've got MOT in two weeks' time. And you have to hire the weights off them. It's a tenner a piece. It's not the end of the world, like it comes in once, once a year, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, so eight ton is perfectly carryable, and it's all in the right proportions. It's all evenly spaced along the bed, all nicely strapped down, ready to go. The one thing I will say is, when you've got eight ton on, you know about it. It's not like when you're driving around with a cup of, you know, it's only a seven and a half ton loader, it's a great big machine, but it only weighs two tons. When you've got eight ton on board, steering is harder, braking takes longer. So, you can see that one from it here. We leave bigger gaps. Fortunately, Liverpool, pretty much going to be all over the way, so 56 miles an hour. All the way there. Like an arrow. Let's go back to the yard. And there we are, nearly back at the yard. See, I told you it was close, didn't I? <laughs> Miles of modern technology and hyperlapse, or what they call it, time lapse photography. Marvellous. Lots of. Yeah, just for the record, anyone that does, doesn't know, the fork trucks don't move that fast. If they did, they'd probably stuff on it and fall over and quite dangerous. So we'd be speeding up. Otherwise, it makes it quite dull. Everyone does it, right? Yeah. That was interesting, actually. You know, like with the old photography, with the old films, where everybody used to walk really fast. Oh, really fast. And they'd be climbing or painting, painting really fast. <laughs> Dancing really fast. And then they realised that what happened was because they had like less frames per second, they were just running it through the cameras too quick. And ironically enough, in the 1920s, you watch the Keystone Cops and all that kind of stuff, they weren't really fast. They weren't like, it wasn't like a comedy, let's play it really, really fast. They shot it at normal speeds, but they played it through the projectors slower. That's true. Yeah, so. Right, which is coming up the yard down here. We'll take a little, uh, take a right and uh, park her up. Right, here's the yard up here on the right. Here we go. As I said, um, you know, you have to go a bit slower when you've got weight on board because you, you know, you don't know what's going to come and meet you around the other, around the other corner and stuff like that. And also, Veronica has a tendency to go, no, you are going slower because this is a bit more of a struggle for me. I don't feel like going up that hill quite as quickly as I normally would when I've got eight and a half ton on board. Oh, I said, not a problem though, we can take it easy, we're well under, we're well under our capacity and, um, I'm just looking at all the motorway, so we go. Let's go. Get this one in here, put it in a bed, ready for Sunday. And that's that. And we're off. Da 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 The, um, <clears throat> right. Satnam's already changed because one of it had a toll road in which is going to save me eight minutes. I'm not paying a 13 pound toll for eight minutes. Stick that. 
Uh, right, so we're now looking at, as you see, you see what I mean? How, how quickly it changes. Got to do the electric gate, look. Sunday. Oh, someone's done it for me, that's nice. Um, so there you go. So, yeah, we're now looking at the moment, it's saying 10.53 on ways and 10.51 on road lords. And ways had a tendency to be correct, so. Yeah, three and a half hours, give or take. So, we're going. It's going to be M1, isn't it? It's going to be M1. Yeah, M1. Yeah, M1 North. And then A50. Afterwards, Derby. Going to go that way this morning. And then Stockport. Oh, Stockport. Oh, what done? Frankie Valley did a song about Stockport. It was bizarre, you know, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, Who Loves Your Pretty Baby and Oh What A Night and all that. And I don't, I can't quite remember why. I think it might have been a competition. And they wanted to do a song um, promoting Stockport. And it, I mean, I've tried to get it on, on, on the sort of on the Spotify and I can't, which is a shame. It's actually quite a good song. But you can get it on a YouTube. And I'm sure that if you're watching this, you are probably familiar with the YouTube. And it's basically Frankie Valley, the, the you know, of Jersey Boys fame and all that, going, Oh, Stockport, what a wonderful place, or something like that. I can't remember, it's a good song. So, anyway, I'll leave you to check that one out. I'm going to do a bit of driving. Catch up with you in a bit. It looks like it's set to be quite a warm day out there, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how the air conditioning works in my um, DAF LF5562 plate. So what it is, I've got um, two buttons on the uh, on the driver's side here, and if you want it on a little bit, you press this button here, and this thing comes down a little bit. That, that's probably on about a quarter. Uh, if you want it on like higher, you can press the button again. So this glass thing on the side of this lights all the way down, thus giving it a full breeze. That's it on half. If you want it on full, it's the second button. Get a bit noisy now. That makes the other glass thing on the other side winds down. Gives a nice breeze. Just pop them up there. I right? know. Just turn it. Just going to turn the air conditioning off there so you can hear me a bit better. So what I've done there is I've hit both of the switches and the glass things on either side, the bits in the doors, have now gone all the way up. That's the air conditioning off completely. Uh, it works really well, I've got to say. It does a nice breeze. Um, doesn't work so well in traffic. If you're stuck in the city in traffic and you wind down both of the glass things, it just gets hotter. Poor design. Right, nearly there. Um, we're down to now 19 miles, 25 minutes. The joy with that, of course, is that it means that the actual place I'm going to won't be far off the motorway, so we won't have to do hopefully any tight country roads or small lanes or difficult roads. It should be pretty much truck roads all the way there. I will be pleased to get it off. Um, it's just so much easier carrying like a weight side. If you're right on normal motorways, you can just hit the, hit the speed control and the cruise control and away you go and just sort of just here. But when you get like the older ones where like you get ruts, where lorries have run through before you, you can kind of get caught in a rut and it's well I have to drive it. You can't just you can't rely on auto cruise. You've got to be sort of on and off the uh, on the throttle at the time. Uh, in case it's been like, oh, 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 hang on, it's going to be sideways. So, um, yeah, but we're not too far now. Like I say, and we're on target. We should be there, um, like I was saying, just, about, just before 11 o'clock. So, get it in, hopefully, get out, get tipped, get to the next one with our fingers crossed. Right, it's saying it's TJ Morris. There ain't no TJ Morris around. Right? But I Googled it earlier, and when I Googled it, it said TJ Morris is part of Home Bargains. And there's a great big Home Bargains there, well, I just couldn't pass the goods in. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to um, drive this over to the goods in department of Home Bargains and go 
Where is that? I've got a delivery for TJ Morris. Is that you, perchance? And I'm going to say, I think there is a very strong chance that they will go, that is us, yes. I'll keep you informed. Right, right place, wrong gatehouse. Well, I well, wasn't too far. Yeah, you know, I was sort of pretty much on on the um, on the area. There is a TM thingy sign on the side of it. You can me in the direction. Uh, and I had a booked delivery for twelve o'clock. Now it's now five past eleven. That's kind of pretty close, isn't it, guys? But they've said um, come back to the gatehouse at half eleven. So I'm probably going to get fifteen minutes break. I might have a little walk out or something like that. Maybe have a sit me past your seat, grab my guitar. Um, and then I feel fortunately I'm not in a hurry up because I've got once this is tipped I've got I don't have to be at my next one till four o'clock so it's off when it gets off doesn't it really sooner rather than later I right half eleven we got a bay so uh, that's not too bad is it plan is we stick it on the bay keys and paperwork on the back and then the light will go red and we'll get thunder in the back. And then when the light goes green, you pull out, you go grab your keys and you sign paperwork. They'll check me on the way out. Make sure that uh, I haven't tried to steal off the um, stuff in the warehouse. And then I'm going to go to the next one. So how are we doing on the race so far? Half 11. At the moment, we're ahead of the game. But it's not this stage that I was concerned about. It's the second stage. That's the one that I think could take all the time. You know, when we get there and, oh, we're not quite ready yet. Oh, we've been a bit of a delay. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it ain't going to be done until. Oh, that's, that's the one that's concerning me. But at least we've got to get the weight off. That's, that's going to be quite, uh, give Veronica a bit of um, a bit of a diet now. She's about, about to lose about eight and a half tonne. So, I'll wait for the rubber to it. Give me a second. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And there she is. Well, I'm sitting on a bay. No thunder yet, but I've got my feet up, no problem. Um, I've got to say, I've got time. The question is, what were they a bit time? But um, yeah, I'm just going through my YouTube because so I couldn't do my Sunday Q&A this morning because obviously I'm driving. And there was one from Motti, which I didn't even think of. He said, eight tonne of drain cleaner, is that dangerous goods? Are you and your truck ADR compliant? Uh, Motti, the answer to your question, which I'll probably answer next time I get around to doing Q&As, no, I'm not ADR compliant. I don't think it's dangerous goods. I had a look on the thing, and it's not so much drain cleaner, it's kill rock. And that's another thing. I worked out, I thought, I've been to this place before. Now, the reason I work, well, I, I'm familiar with the term kill rock is it's the stuff I used to defuzz the kettle because we live in a hard water area. It's all chalk, and you pour this stuff in, it goes... Tss, it's all bubbly, it's like that space dust you used to pour on your tongue. Contemporary reference to the 18 to 24 year olds. Um, and um, it sort of fizzes all the chalk away, which builds up. Otherwise, if you don't, you're drinking tea, you know, like that, and taking out little flakes of white. That's horrible. Uh, but no, I don't think it is. But it is always that fear in it with stuff we pick out. We are at the mercy of the people that put it on board. If it's, if it's 12 black shrimp wrap pallets, for all I know, I could be moving 12 tonne of heroin. Which you probably wouldn't be good, and you'd probably go down for a very long time. But um, I also want the belief that if you're moving 12 tonne of heroin, you don't stick it on the career exchange. It's probably worth quite a lot of money. But no, I don't think it's ADR. If I got stopped and turned out to be ADR, where do you go with that? I don't know. I don't know. Presumably it's my fault because I should know better, but how are you supposed to know this stuff? As it is, hopefully about half hour's time, it won't even be there anymore. And the next one is, um, I believe the fittings for a show. So it should be done, it's only seven and a half done. Should be compliant with that. So I'll well, just wait again. Now, five past one now. Um, well, I've been here two hours. I got here early. I wasn't due here till 12. You get the first half free, but they have tipped me. The light was red, the, um, the thunder has happened. Now I presume they're just counting the boxes to make sure there's enough there. Uh, it's been difficult because it's I'm parked under an, under a canopy, looking at a beautiful blue sunshine. It really has been the nicest nicest Sunday this year, which is unfortunate. You know, on any other day, a bit grey, a bit cloudy, you, go, you know. But you kind of feel a bit like you're missing out. Um, you know, I think about the money, and all the money in the world didn't buy a second of time, did it? So, having said that, 
Fortunately, with the next job that I was supposed to be picking up originally at one, I got moved till four, I've still got three hours to go and fetch it. And there's a difference between waiting here and waiting there, isn't it, really, I suppose? I mean, if I get to the next job and they say we've been ready for two hours, then I'm going to be slightly miffed. But even then, I won't be, because then I'll be on and gone, won't I? So, um, just waiting for the count up now, and then we'll uh, take it, take a little shimmy to the gate so they can check the back to make sure I haven't nicked anything. Um, and then we're off to the next one as soon as that light turns green. Right, that's uh, seen in the back. I'm going to take it out on the road here, pop it off, photograph the POD, then on to the next one. It's always a good sign when that day opens your hour. Off to the next one. 34 minutes, that's not bad. So if, uh, yeah, yeah, I would have been late, but if it had been one o'clock, I'd have got there at two. I'd have had to, I would have had to ring and say, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm stuck with this review, so I can't get out. But that's not bad. Two o'clock, I'm due there at four o'clock. I'm going to be two hours early. Let's hope that they've got it early, or let's hope that even a little bit earlier. Obviously, if not, I'm kidding. Got the air condition on full. Got both windows open. Yay! Open road. Here we go.